Eating and drinking the right things can help support your bone health at every stage of your life. Calcium and vitamin D are two nutrients well known to be important for bones. And you can find out all about these in our other films and on, and on our website. But calcium and vitamin D are only part of the story. And we regularly get questions about other nutrients and dietary regimes from people who are keen to help keep their bones healthy and strong. In this online Q&A, we've asked several experts in the field to answer some common questions about some of these topics, including vitamin K supplements, phytates and oxalates, and low fat dairy products. We asked Professor David Armstrong, consultant rheumatologist at Altner Gelvin Hospital in Londonderry and visiting chair at the Nutrition Innovation Centre for Food and Health at Ulster University to talk to us about supplements. So, Professor Armstrong, should people take a vitamin and mineral supplement for their bone health? Sometimes that depends on, on the individual person, for example, how much calcium they take naturally in the diet. Um, but calcium and vitamin D supplements are often recommended. To be honest, vitamin D deficiency is very common in the UK, apart, or particularly the northern parts where there's, there's less sunshine. And therefore, most clinicians will recommend vitamin D supplementation if you've got osteoporosis. But the ROS has some specific fact sheets about calcium and vitamin D, which, which are very useful. And again, it's something that you can ask your, your healthcare professional. In terms of the other rarer nutrients and vitamins, such as vitamin B and vitamin C and vitamin K and minerals such as magnesium, we know they play an important part in, in developing and maintaining healthy bones. In terms of whether or not taking extra amounts off them is good for your bones or reduces the risk of fracture, there's not really any research to suggest that at the moment, or certainly not enough research that we can suggest that. And it's important to remember that you will get these nutrients through a healthy, balanced diet involving all the main food groups. So in general, there's no reason to recommend that you would take extra amounts of those particular supplements. Next, we asked Professor Geeta Hampson, Professor of Clinical Biochemistry and Bone Metabolism at King's College London and consultant at Guy's and St Thomas's NHS Foundation Trust to tell us about vitamin K and bone health. Professor Hampson, what is vitamin K? Vitamin K is a vitamin that is found in um, commonly eaten food and is um, easily absorbed by the body. So the vast majority of people uh, do not need to worry about uh, whether they are taking enough. Um, it is found in um, a variety of uh, food, including green leafy vegetables, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, okra, cereal, um, fish, meat, um, eggs, uh, as well as in some fermented food like fermented soybean called natto and fermented dairy products such as cheese, uh, uh, some soft cheeses and yogurt. It is also made in your gut by the good bacteria that are present there. Does vitamin K help with bone health? Vitamin K's main role is actually in helping your blood to clot, but it also activates a protein called uh, osteocalcin, uh, which is present in bone. And osteocalcin needs vitamin K in order to um, build, uh, heal and uh, maintain healthy bones. Some research has uh, found that people with a low uh, intake of vitamin K are, have lower bone density and are, have an increased risk of fracture but other studies have not found this, so it is difficult to be sure. Vitamin K deficiency when your body really does not have enough uh, vitamin K is rare in adults, but may occur if you have certain specific uh, conditions uh, that affect um, the absorption of your food, such as in celiac disease, Crohn's disease, or in severe liver disease. If you have any of these uh, conditions, then your bones might be affected. Should people take a vitamin K supplement? Research has not shown yet whether taking vitamin K supplements improves bone strength. So currently, vitamin K supplements are not recommended. 
Um, what we do know is that people who eat lots of vitamin K rich food seem le at less likely to uh, have a hip fracture as they get older, which suggests that eating vitamin K rich food is sensible. I've heard that vitamin K2 supplements might be good for people who take calcium supplements. Is this true? Some people believe that vitamin K2, which is a form of vitamin K present in meat and in fermented foods, may help uh, keep blood vessels healthy and prevent calcium uh, from building up in your arteries. So far, however, research studies have not proven this. So at the moment, uh, vitamin K2 supplements are not recommended. As usual, if you are going to take a, vit a vitamin supplement, uh, it is important you discuss this with your GP in case there is a medical reason why you shouldn't. We're often asked if there are any foods that you should avoid. The short answer is no. There are no foods that are known to be bad for bones, but there are some that are best enjoyed in moderation. Lots of people ask us about phytates, oxalates and low fat dairy products. Let's look at the facts so that you can choose your foods with confidence. We also asked Professor Armstrong to talk to us about the amount of calcium in low fat dairy products. Professor Armstrong, we regularly hear from people who use skimmed milk uh, and are concerned about missing out on calcium. What can you tell us about this? Yeah, that's a good question. A lot of people ask that about, about skimmed milk, for example. The good news is you don't need to worry. Low-fat dairy products contain just as much calcium as higher-fat options. Calcium is contained in the sort of non-fat part of the milk, um, and therefore when you actually remove the fat, in some ways what's left ha has a sort of a higher concentration of calcium. So if you're choosing a low-fat dairy option for whatever reason, you can be reassured that you're getting plenty of calcium and that it's a good option to choose. We asked Dr Madhavi Vindlacheravu, consultant orthogeriatrician at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge, to tell us about whether phytates and oxalates in food reduce the amount of calcium absorbed. So what foods contain phytates and oxalates? Foods containing phytates include plant-based foods such as bran, nuts, whole grain cereals, dried beans, seeds and grains. Foods containing oxalates include plant-based foods, tea, rhubarb and spinach. Rhubarb and spinach are particularly high in oxalates. This means that these foods don't provide much calcium for the body to absorb, even if they contain calcium. Dr. Vindlacheravu, please, can you tell me what phytates and oxalates are? Phytates, also known as phytic acid, and oxalates, or oxalic acid, are chemical compounds found in a wide range of plant-based foods. They are usually only found in very small amounts. They don't harm bones directly, but they can reduce the amount of calcium that your body absorbs from your food. The reason for this is that they bind with any calcium that you're eating at the same time. When they reach your gut, phytates and most oxalates pass through without being absorbed into your body. And this means that any calcium that's bound to them also passes through your gut without being absorbed. This in turn means that there may be less calcium available for your bones. Do phytates and oxalates prevent all calcium absorption? No. But if food contains a lot of phytates and oxalates, it can affect the amount of calcium that gets absorbed. Most foods that contain phytates and oxalates only contain small amounts, so they only bind to small amounts of calcium. So if your diet contains plenty of calcium, you don't need to worry or make any changes. Should stop people stop eating these foods? No, because these foods also contain important nutrients and fibre. Fibre is very important to keep your bowel healthy and prevent problems such as constipation. Instead, try to have a diet rich in calcium because then the effects of phytates and oxalates you're eating will be very limited. Can soaking food remove phytates and oxalates? You may have heard that soaking food might help to reduce the levels of phytates and oxalates, but this is not proven and can reduce levels of important nutrients so it isn't recommended to soak food for this reason.
We often hear from people that they've read on their calcium supplement instruction sheet that they mustn't have food that is high in fibre after taking their supplement because it'll stop the calcium being absorbed. Is this true? It is important to remember that phytates and oxalates do not prevent the absorption of all of the calcium. If plenty of calcium is taken, and this is the case when you're taking a supplement, there'll be lots of free calcium that is not bound to these substances and is therefore available for absorption. The companies that produce these supplements tend to be very cautious when explaining to you that not all the supplement will be absorbed. This is true, but it shouldn't make enough of a difference to affect you or your bones. And you don't need to avoid fibrous foods for many hours around the time you take a supplement. We have heard from several experts in the field of osteoporosis that eating a healthy, well-balanced diet should provide you with enough vitamins and minerals and nutrients to support you with your bone health. If you would like more information about any of these topics that we've discussed in this film, we have lots of information available on our website vros.org.uk, including a further foods fact sheet which explores the role of other minerals. We would like to say thank you to all the experts who took part in this film for their time and their contributions.